In this lecture, I'm going to show you how we can use the single neuron model to help you solve a problem. We're going to use it to help you figure out when your friend is bluffing at poker. Let's say you have a friend, Sam, and you started playing poker together. It's lots of fun, and you think you've got an advantage because a mutual friend has tipped you that Sam is a terrible liar and it totally shows on his face. You suspect that it has something to do with the angle of his mouth because that's the main part of his face that moves. But imagine that you're a little bit like me and you're not always fantastic at picking up nonverbal cues. But good thing you've got your single neuron model to your rescue. And you're also going to use your smartphone to collect data on the angle of Sam's mouth. You start collecting your data. You use your phone to secretly capture the angle of Sam's mouth and also keep track of whether or not he was bluffing each time. So let's say now you've got your data, say 100 rounds of data about Sam's mouth angle and whether he was bluffing. Something to remember is that you should always have training data separate from the test data. So training data is the data that you train your model on. And then the test data is what you use to evaluate how well your model does. So let's say you could use 65 of your data points for training and then 35 of your data points for testing, just as an example of what you might do. So you feed your training data into your perceptron model. And remember that the model requires inputs that are numerical values. So we have to represent this bluffing versus telling the truth as a numerical value. And so we're going to represent bluffing with a 1 and truth-telling with a 0. So let's remind ourselves what the perceptron does. The perceptron sits around waiting for input. And in this case, the input is one-dimensional data consisting of the angle of Sam's mouth. The perceptron needs to find a unique weight for each dimension of the input. So here we only have one-dimensional input, the mouth angle, and so the perceptron only needs to find a single weight value. The perceptron then takes the weighted sum of the input, and in this case the weighted sum is just the weight times our one input value, and combines this with its unique bias term. You use the data that you've collected and train the perceptron model to find the values of weight and bias that will most accurately predict your test data. So in this case, your perceptron, after training, found a weight of value 1 and a bias of value negative 3. So the value for the sum for your perceptron model will be calculated with the following equation, 1, which is your weight value, times the mouth angle x, which is your data input, minus 3, because your bias was negative 3. And this value of the sum is what gets fed through the step activation function to produce an output from the neuron. Altogether, this means that your perceptron works like this. When Sam's mouth angle is less than 3 degrees, the sum will be less than 0. And when the sum that is less than 0 is fed through the activation function, the output will be 0. And then this will correspond to Sam telling the truth. When the mouth angle is greater than 3 degrees, then the sum is greater than 0. Applying the activation function, this means that the output will be 1, which means Sam is bluffing. So what your single perceptron model has learned is the fact that when Sam's mouth angle is greater than or equal to 3 degrees, he's bluffing. Let's walk through some specific examples of your perceptron model making predictions. So if Sam's mouth angle is at negative 3 degrees, then the perception will take the sum 1 times negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6. Next, it has to apply its activation function. And because the sum is equal to negative 6, negative 6 is less than 0. And therefore, the activation function tells you that the neuron is going to output a 0, which corresponds to the prediction that Sam is telling the truth. So when Sam's mouth is at angle negative 3 degrees, he's telling the truth. Now we look at an example when the smile angle is 0. Here, the sum is 1 times 0 minus 3, and that equals negative 3. So the sum is less than 0, and when we pass that through the activation function, that gives a 0, 
and so Sam is still telling the truth. Now look at what happens when the smile angle is equal to 3. Here, to calculate the sum, we've got 1 times 3 minus 3, and that equals 0. So this is just at the threshold where the activation function output becomes 1, because now the sum is greater than or equal to 0, and the output is 1. And that means that the model is telling us that now Sam is bluffing. So Sam is starting to bluff when his smile angle is equal to 3. Next, we look at the case where the smile angle is equal to 6. Here, 1 times 6 minus 3 is 3. This means that the sum is greater than or equal to 0, and passing through the activation function gives us an output of 1. It tells us that Sam is bluffing. Let's imagine with the help of your single neuron model, you're able to call Sam's bluff every time. You're pretty happy about this, but Sam's not. A couple weeks go by, and you suspect that something's changed. Sam's really ticked off that you're always winning, and he's got a serious resting frowny face all the time. Your model stops being so accurate at predicting Sam's bluffs. It seems the state of the world has changed since you last collected your data. It's time to collect new data and retrain your model. So you collect some new data, and you use it to retrain your perceptron model. From your new training data set, the perceptron now finds that the best value for the weight is still 1, but the bias is now equal to 5. A bias of equal to 5 means that the sum for this new perceptron model becomes 1 times x, which is the mouth angle, plus 5. So the value of this sum is going to be less than 0 when the mouth angle is less than negative 5 degrees. And this is the threshold at which the activation function transitions from outputting 0 to a 1. So what this means is that Sam is bluffing when his mouth angle is greater than or equal to negative 5 degrees, when he's not as frowny as he usually is. Let's go through some prediction scenarios. So if Sam's mouth angle is negative 6, the sum is equal to negative 1, fed through the activation function, it's less than 0, so the output is 0. Sam is telling the truth. If Sam's mouth angle is negative 3, the sum is equal to 2, and applying the activation function gives an output of 1, and Sam is bluffing. When the mouth angle is 0, the sum is 5. Applying the activation function, we have an output of 1, and Sam is still bluffing. And when the mouth is 3 degrees, the sum is equal to 8, and when applying the activation function, we have an output of 1, and Sam is bluffing. Our new perceptron model has found the new mouth angle at which Sam transitions from telling the truth to bluffing. And now I want to show you what these equations represent on the graph. So the equation for the sum with this 1D input is the equation for a straight line where the x-axis is crossed at negative 5. And that's the value at which there is a transition from truth-telling to bluffing, because that's where the activation function transitions from outputting a 0 to a 1. We've just gone over an example of a single neuron model that can handle one-dimensional data. I hope you now have an idea for how single neurons apply computations to data and produce predictions. We're going to cement this with a second example of a single neuron model that handles two-dimensional data.